Hey Nathan here, welcome to the first tutorial in the mono game series. This is the basic training series, just to give you a uh, overview on how to quickly use mono game. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to draw a PNG file to the screen using the sprite batch. So in the video description and on my site, there will be links to the PNG file that you can download and then use in this game so you can follow along. So let's go ahead and create a new project and it's going to be a mono game Windows project. And I'm going to browse to my subversion here and I'm going to go to mono game trunk basics tutorial one drawing sprites. Now I'm going to call this drawing sprites. Click OK and it should create the project and we should be good to go. Alright, let's open up game1.cs and let's press F5 to compile and run it and it runs so we're good. Okay, so just like last time, this is the base implementation of our game, and we're going to extend on this. And for complete games, I like to keep this as simple as possible. For what we are doing, uh, we don't need to make it that complex, so I'm just going to add code on this file. So just for the basics in this series, we're just going to use this file here. Alright, so once you downloaded that... Uh, player paper PNG file we have it on here and I like to keep the resources you know the content you see this content folder here I like to drag those PNG files font files anything into the content folder so that will expand and you'll see our content dot mgcb and our player paper dot PNG the reason we do that is because when we open up the Mono game content pipeline. Oh, by the way, if it does that, for some reason it does this for me almost all, all the time. So I need to right click here, go to open with, and scroll down. If it's on there, if it's not like it is on mine, we need to add on here and then click the dots. Go to program files, MS build, mono game, V3 tools. And then you'll see the pipeline tool here. And I'm just going to call it Mono Game Pipeline. If somebody is familiar with Mono Game and knows how to make that the default, that I did add that before, but then I restarted my computer and I guess it removes it from that list. I don't know why. But every time I start up my computer, I have to re add that. Now it, now it works fine. Okay. Anyway, back to what I was saying, the reason we put the content in the content folder is because this uses a relative path system. So if we right click the content here and go to add existing item, it defaults to the content folder. So if we put it in a different folder, it uses a relative path so it would, you know, it would be a little bit weird having it in a different folder than this. All right, so there is our sprite. It is in our content pipeline file here. So how do we get it to, if you're familiar with XNA, it builds a .xnb file so we can use it in our game. Now with the mono game pipeline, we have to manually build our content and then that will create the xnb file. We don't have to worry about all these properties and stuff here. Uh, that's just... The defaults will work for our purposes. So what we need to do is go to build here and then go ahead and hit rebuild. And then, yeah, let's save the project first and then it will build. One succeeded, zero failed. Okay. So now if we uh, go ahead and do yes. Now let's close this. So now if we go to my subversion here, go to mono game, trunk, basics, tutorial one, drawing sprites, drawing sprites, bin, 
Windows, Debug. And then once we go here and go to Build, Rebuild Solution, we will see a content folder in here with our XMB file. All right, so we are good to go with our XMB file. Now all we need to do is draw it on here. If you're familiar with XNA, you'll be familiar on how we're going to do this. So this is a 2D texture, so we need to have a texture 2D object here. And let's just go ahead and call it uh, Spaceship. Uh, yeah, let's make it private. We don't need to do any public access for this game. Uh, load content. So we're going to go into the load content. We have the spaceship texture here. Now we need to load by using the content system. So what we need to do is we need to type in spaceship is equal to content.load opening angle bracket texture 2D closing angle bracket opening parentheses provide the name of the sprite and the name of it is the asset name and the asset name is usually just the name of it without the extension so we're going to do spaceship is equal to content.load it's a texture 2D content and opening quotes we're going to provide player paper closing quotes closing parentheses and semicolon so that is loaded into our spaceship texture 2D object. So now to unload it, spaceship dot dispose, and that will make sure everything is all cleaned up. Usually when a system inherits from iDisposable, you want to be sure to hit dispose at some point in your project's lifespan. Uh, update, we don't have to do anything on here, and then draw, we're going to draw it using the sprite batch, which is right here. So, all every sprite batch needs a begin and an end cycle, and it's best for performance it's to keep those cycles limited. You don't want to call begin and end for every single sprite you draw, you want to keep the begin and end, you want to keep those calls to minimum as possible. So sprite batch dot begin. Uh, we don't have to do anything here, and then sprite batch dot end. Now in between the begin and end is where we actually add our drawing logic. So sprite batch dot draw, and you see here we have several options. Uh, the basic one is the texture two D vector two and color. So texture 2D will be our spaceship texture. Uh, vector 2, let's do vector 2.0. And color.white. Color.white means what you see in a graphics editor or image viewing program. What you see here is what you'll see on the screen. It doesn't do any tint. It doesn't do anything to the coloring. Color.white is what you see elsewhere is what you see in the game. Now if we press F5, run it, we see our sprite. Now for example, if I change it to color.red, now it will have a red tint to it. So color.white here, and I'm going to change this to color.black for the background. So there you go, our transparency is working, our PNG file has transparency in it, you see by the wings and where the turrets are, the black is coming through, so it is a transparent background image and that's working fine. So that is how you draw something on the screen. We need to create a texture 2D object so we need to have a private field or a public field or whatever access you need it to in your game 
we need to load the content by using the content pipeline. So we need to use the content manager and then we call dot load the texture 2D. That is the type of the asset we are loading. And then we provide the asset name, which is just the just the name without the extension. And then unload content, we call dispose. Since the texture 2D implements iDisposable, it's a good, you want to call dispose on any iDisposable. And at some point in your project, you'll want to hit the dispose method when you're done with it. Usually you'll have a using statement if you're using that, you know, in like one function, one method, one block of code, you have a using statement here. But we're using this in several uh, methods and it's a private field, so we need to manually call dispose. Update, we're not updating anything in this tutorial. Draw, we changed our graphics device clearing to black. To draw something, you need to be in between a begin and end cycle. You need to mark it as you are beginning to draw. And then when you're done, you hit the end method. To actually draw, we need to pass in the texture 2D. The two-dimensional vector on where we want the texture to be drawn to. So if we do new vector 2 100 comma 200 it'll be in a different position and the color we want to use to draw color dot white means what we have in the image editor or image preview file or whatever you see in any image viewing program you will see in the game that's what white means now I change the vector 2 to 100 comma 200, so that's where that is. So that's it for this video. This is going to be a very quick video uh, series in general. There's only going to be a few tutorials for the series for the absolute basics. And then we'll get into the more complex stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, be sure to link the MGCB like I had to do at the very beginning. Link that to the Mono Game Pipeline. And for those that have used the new Mono Game with the new pipeline, it might be a bug or something that they need to release, you know, Mono Game 3.5 to fix. I don't know. But I constantly have to keep on going open with and then add and then browse to that pipeline tool. So if you have that issue where it opens up like it did on me, you have to go to the uh, program files, MS build, mono game, v3, tools folder. And then you will see the pipeline.exe application here. And once that's linked, if you just double click that, It'll open it up in the Mono Game Pipeline. And then to add your content, just right click the word content here and go to add. You can either do new item for some sprite fonts or you can add existing item for, you know, pre-built textures that you used or stuff you downloaded from sites. And you can rebuild, you can delete the project and so on. Change the profile here and so on. Okay, so once that's in there, be sure to add the resource to the content folder since this uses relative pathing. It's just easier having it in the content folder. And then we use the content pipeline, the content manager, to load it. All right, so next tutorial we will talk about let me bring this up here for a minute. We will talk about moving sprites. So we talked about drawing them now. Now we need to move them. So I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.